Hello guys, welcome to your first Ruby tutorial. And in this series, I'm going to cover Ruby, the programming language from scratch. So if this is your first programming language, then this is the right place. I'm going to be covering everything from the basics. And then I'm going to move over to more advanced topics such as modules and classes. I'm also going to be covering something that is overlooked, like principles of object-oriented design and also design patterns, which I'm going to be specifically doing them for Ruby. And it's something that, you know, everybody needs to know nowadays. So, what is Ruby? Ruby is an object-oriented programming language. It is very modern. It hasn't been in the industry for that long compared to other ones. And the power of Ruby is that everything is an object. And although you might not know what that is, it makes it very, very powerful. And also one of the joys of Ruby is that it's very easy to understand. I personally started with PHP. And some of the methods and some of those those um those things that you have to type they don't make that much sense. But in Ruby it's actually more once you type something in it'll make sense you know for somebody that's reading it like uh, like a human you know it makes more sense. So that's why a lot of people like Ruby. So head over to rubyinstaller.org and this is only for Windows. If you're on any of the Unix operating systems like Mac or Linux, Ruby should come pre-installed. So go over to rubyinstaller.org, click on the download link, and there's a couple of versions here, but we're going to download the latest um, stable version, which is at this point 1.93. Okay, so once you have it installed, I mean, once you have it download, which I already do, I'm not going to download it again. Um, let me see where it's at. You're going to get an icon here, like Ruby Installer. Double, double click on it. And accept the conditions. If you want to read it on, go ahead. Click Next. Make sure you click on these boxes here because we're going to be using this stuff. Also, I recommend that you install in the default directory unless you don't have any more space. If you're going to install like in um you know, some other hard drive, then I recommend you do it without spaces. So, install it. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to install it here. So, I'm going to click cancel. Also, what you want to do is uh, we're going to need a text editor now. A difference between the text editor and something like um, word processor is like um, Microsoft Office the what's which one is called yeah the Microsoft Office is that these ones are designed for specifically for programmers if you're if you have a pretty modern computer I recommend you get Aptana Studio it's an excellent IDE it's actually not a text editor it's called an IDE integrated development environment and what it does is it, get, it helps us with color coding and it tells us you know you see a little picture here you have all the folders nice and organized uh, but it does require a lot of RAM to run it so make sure you have a decent computer if you don't then I recommend you download this one Sublime Text 2 this one is becoming super popular nowadays in the web development community and one of the reasons is because it's very fast it's written by Python by one guy actually and he wrote it entirely in Python and I tried it and it's really good it's really really fast but I you know I like Aptana Studio better since I have a pretty modern computer I prefer Aptana Studio but that's up to you you could probably you know all this text header wars crap it's really it's a matter of opinion so the thing you want to know about Sublime Text 2 is that it's not free although you could download it and you know you get a trial and it's never gonna end so my download here is actually just a trial and I had it for you know forever you only get you're gonna get bugged like once in a while when you save you just click cancel and that's it so it's pretty much like it's free kind of but when you do have money then I, I recommend you buy it so that's pretty much you're gonna need for all this so once you have um, Ruby installed already let's test to see if you install it correctly so open up your command line or terminal so I'm gonna t I'm gonna open the command line CMD and we're going to run something called Interactive Ruby. When we install uh, Ruby Installer, it comes with something called IRB. And what it is, it's going to allow us uh, to run the command line and interact with our program. The way you open it is just type in IRB. And we could type in any commands here. So if I say something like, you don't need to know about this right now. Just type in 6 dot times do the pipe symbol I the pipe then hit enter and then let's just put puts I enter end 
and we should be getting six times the the number here one two three four five six starting with zero that's important so this is a way to quickly test our programs we're actually writing the code in the in the files and saving it and all doing all that stuff so we're going to be using this a lot but the thing about ruby is that it actually has some structure so the way we do it is usually where it says put we indent it so it looks a little nicer so irb it does work but there's something better than irb which is what we're going to be using so in order to exit irb just type quit so we're going to install something else. It's exactly like IRB, but it's got indentation, it's got color coding, and it's just much better. So the way you install it is gem install pry. Now, it's going to take a little while. I'm not going to install it because I already have it installed. So once you have it installed, instead of typing IRB for Interactive Ruby, we're going to type pry. And now let's type the exact same code to see the difference. So six times do the pipe symbol and now you see that it, it gets indented right so put I and then hit enter and then N and everything gets nicely formatted so that's the reason I want to show you because it's a lot better than than the, the default um, IRB so that's all for now that's all just to check to make sure that you have it installed correctly in the next video we're gonna go over the basics of Ruby um, variables and all that kind of stuff and thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe